giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. I'm going to be starting today with the U.S. South. So we had a ton of action in the South recently with a ton of state competitions. So we're going to start with Alabama. We had a uh, root negative one, actually, 98-79, take b- home both the first place Inspire and the winning Alliance captain, which is really, really cool. Now, Browncoats, 78-42, were the second place Inspire, and they took home the second advancement slot from Alabama. Uh, a lot of these teams actually competed in Arkansas, and so let's go to that state. Um, now, if we can play the video here in Arkansas, it was a state championship in early February, and we had our alliance of GSA Two, Robo Nerds one, in the go. back and lights on with Blue Crater taking home the win with a score of 377. On the red side, we have Tech Hogs and Brown Coats. Uh, as you can see here, Tech Hogs has changed a little bit uh, since we last saw them. They now have one of those, uh, just an arm bot before they had all that crazy. Uh, like all that crazy XYZ motion. And I mean, this bot seems to be working really, really efficiently. <clears throat> Does anyone else have anything to comment about this match? Uh, I'm interested to see. It looks like, are they a double jointed arm or is that a chain bar? Do you know? Uh, I Cause... think it's a double jointed arm. Uh, I think we see it just here in a second. Interesting. But I'm not, yeah. So um, now, from Arkansas, or from Arkansas, yeah, we had uh, technical difficulties, 71-72. They won the Inspire Award, and they're actually a team from Texas, which I found very surprising. Uh, then, 97-92, the GSA Robo Nerds were from St. Louis, Missouri, and they were the captain of their winning alliance. <clears throat> so now, what's interesting is the three teams that advanced from Arkansas, uh, or not not the three teams, three teams that competed at Arkansas were already advancing to Worlds, and this uh, these were Root Negative One, Brown Coats, and Tech Hogs. So yeah, like I really found it interesting that teams would like go out of their way to get more experience and even come as far from Texas. <clears throat> So Arkansas had three um, three advancement slots, but Georgia they had five. Now with Georgia, um, they had they had a pretty early championship, and if we can roll this video <clears throat> with their winning alliance. So here we have on Red Crater we have uh, batteries not included ten two one nine, and then their partner playing Depot is Twisted Axle sixty forty seven. So these uh, two robots are two classic double transfer system robots, I believe. And I mean, they put up a pretty high score in this match. I believe it was plus four hundred. <clears throat> so yeah, do you guys, anyone from Georgia, have anything to say in the chat? I'm just gonna say it the way I feel it. This yeah, let us know, dumb. Ethan Shashir. Got yes. To say. So, how um, do you, yeah, uh, from from what you've seen in this, how like interconnected are these alliances in terms of uh, their match play and their strategy? Do they work right. well? Like, are they working well together? Or are they sort of staying separate and just trying to do their own thing? What kind, I mean, what kind I of I mean, I thought it never seemed like they got in each other's way, and uh, I think a big part of it is like if you see, um, their cycles are pretty like offset from each other, and so they never actually like score at the same time throughout the whole match. And I thought like, that's definitely like a big key part of it. <clears throat> do you think that's a valid strategy that, that that team should really start to pursue? Or do you think that was just a fluke? I am not exactly sure. I mean, it could have just been lucky, but I think at Houston, that's something we could definitely see if teams are practicing and they find out, you know, they both have like a six, seven second cycle time. You guys start first, we'll go next. Hopefully, you know, it just keeps up that way. We won't interact. And I think that could be like a very, very viable thing to see. Do you think that's something that a team would go about just designing their deposit mechanism to not interfere with now their teams? See, or... I think that's I, I definitely I definitely agree with that because uh, what happened is if you see um, uh, batteries not included right in the front, they have like a very short deployment box. I think it's just like barely minimum as what it needs to be. And so they're like never crossing. They're never really crossing into like the depot territory. And uh, this is something like I've noticed at, when we were designing our box actually is it's a little bit longer and it goes a little bit more into the gold. And this interfered just slightly during our matches at Florida in the Florida State Championship. But I think that's something teams should take a look at for Worlds. Absolutely. I think yeah, we've. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's also very hard to time depot scoring to be the same exact thing as the crater scoring because crater scoring is just inherently faster. So right. to sync that all up is very, very difficult. We had trouble with it at one of the later mm-hmm. competitions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Absolutely. that definitely makes sense. Yeah.
But yeah, that's what you said uh, was very true in the sense that you really want to make sure that your your dumping mechanism doesn't detract. Because I know that when we practice at home um, with our sister team, like our both of our dumpers are slightly long, and we have to actually coordinate that dumping because otherwise right. everything gets tangled up. So uh, that's an important that's an important point to make. Um, I think it's something it's a more subtle aspect of the game that people don't really mm-hmm. look at, but um, it can be quite important when you're trying to get those cycles. And uh, another thing I just noticed about this match is, like, how quickly batteries not included hung at the end. I believe it was about the three, four second mark they started to hang and they were up by the two second mark. Like, do you guys think that's something that, like, teams are going to be risking at the World Championship? Oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Like, I mean, every single year you're going to see those buzzer beaters and those are the teams that right. win. Right, right, right. Just well, one extra uh, yeah, see, this year it's more conducive to that compared to last year, because last year all those teams could just be done with 50 seconds remaining, um, yeah, right. taunt, their, taunt their opponents a bit, and then have balance with <laughs> plenty of time. But yeah, yeah, I completely agree, because the creator, every year, when there's a, a challenge that can't be completed, like completely mm-hmm. done, before the buzzer, there are going to be teams that are trying to go up to the buzzer. <laughs> so right. Velocity it's, it's, Vortex. Exactly. Ex- that's that's the perfect example, right? With those um, cat balls happening at like the one second mark with that, like right. you know, just keeping it up there and being ready and all that kind of interaction. Teams are really, I think, going to focus, the, the top teams who really want to maximize that point output, they're going to be focusing entirely on making sure that they can get that consistent hang in the last three seconds of the match, in the last two seconds mm-hmm. of the match. Mm-hmm. And so from Georgia, as I stated before, we had five teams advancing. And so this was these were Circuit Runners Black with First Inspire, Batteries Not Included as the winning Alliance captain, Smyoa Syndicate as second Inspire, Twisted Axles as the first pick, Eagle Robotics Diamond Plate, uh, and Eagle Robotics Diamond Plate as third Inspire. So yeah. Uh, the highest score at this championship was 429 by the winning alliance. And so I mean, Georgia should have some strong teams coming into Houston. Now, on to my favorite state and my home state, Florida. So Florida's always been, like, really, really competitive. And I think this year, especially, we've been seeing that. Um, I mean, we had seven teams advancing, and that was really, really crazy. Because, I mean, last year at Supers, we or we had, like, 14 or something, like, a huge number like that advancing to Houston or to the Super Regionals. And just cutting that down made it a lot more competitive. So in this video, we have the highest score by the winning alliance, Boombots, and their first pick, Masquerade. This was a 491 match, and I mean, yeah, it was just a solid, you know, just a solid creator team and a solid depot team working together to get a high score. Uh, yes, finals won. Interesting. And um, so after after Boombots and Masquerade, their partner was Metamorphosis, uh, 4227, who's actually uh, Mechromancer's sister team. So they also had a really nice, clean-looking robot that performed well, definitely. And they're also going to be attending the World Championship. Now, our uh, first, our, our three Inspires were uh, my team, 516 Years of Fire, taking home first. And then we had uh, Super, or KNO3 as the second-place Inspire and Super 7 as the third-place Inspire, same as last year with Super 7 as third. And our uh, seventh advancement slot was given to Team Duct Tape, who actually won Connect because of uh, the amount of repeats he had. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so something that's interesting about this match that stands out to me is traditionally, like this year, the one alliance's depot side robot, so the far right. side robot will often right. go to the other alliance's crater, whereas right. these are all going to their alliance's crater. Mm-hmm. Um, Boombots and Masquerade actually practice together before the state finals or before states itself, and so I think that definitely helped a lot with. Um, you know, devising the right strategy, seeing how the bots interact. And I think, I mean, I, I definitely think this was the right decision going together to the same crater. Mm-hmm. I'm so the surprised reason- the blue robot didn't go over and try to starve the red alliance mm-hmm. of minerals and right. make that harder. Right. Um, that makes it tough, though, for the blue mm-hmm. alliance robot to score with two other robots in that crater. Right. So it's kind of this was just one of those straight up scoring matches who can get the highest. No defense, nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing tricky like that. Yeah. Um, another, uh, uh, the high, this was the highest match of all day. And then the highest qualification match was actually 407 by us and our partner, Royal Blue. So um, I believe we had a video of that. Oh, yes. It's, it should be the second link, Tyler. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, in this match, we got 407. I mean, it was, uh, it was just one of those same We Actually, Royal Blue strategy was very interesting. They went to the opposing depot for the first 
for, for the first couple cycles and then switched over to hours. And I think that was definitely really effective uh, as that allowed as that allowed a oh, wrong video. But that's fine. Um, as that allowed, you know, a lot of like strategy and teams were like surprised a bit because they had they like all the minerals were in the back by the time, you know, they started taking. So I think that was definitely really effective. And uh, Florida should definitely be a strong, strong alliance at um at Houston this year or strong state at Houston this year. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, um, we can go on to Kansas if you guys want or if you guys want to watch this match, it's up to you. You guys have anything to commentate? Yeah. Well, I think yeah, I think it's uh, best to move on to Kansas. But this is very interesting. I think that Royal Blues, like they're, they're just their robot and mechanisms as a whole, I think was very cool to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were definitely a really strong depot team, and uh, it was really cool because they were like the first like complete go builder robot I saw this year, and oh, I was wow. like thinking that's really cool moving to a new system and you know taking on that challenge. Very impressive. Mm-hmm. And so now with Kansas. What I found out this year while doing some research is Kansas doesn't have its own individual state tournament. They actually join uh, with Missouri, and that's going to be this weekend in Rolla, Missouri. So we should see some strong teams there with uh, the likes of Astromech and uh, Rolla Patriots. You know, those are always teams that are strong at Houston. Yeah. Uh, Same thing with Louisiana. They have their uh, state championship, not this weekend, actually, but next weekend. And so we know Dark Matter is always strong, and maybe hopefully they'll make it to Houston. So we'll get some more information on that when it happens. Now, on to Mississippi. So Mississippi has three advancement spots to Houston, and uh, these were taken by teams 6302 and EKOS, 7802 Challenge Accepted uh, as the Inspire winner and finalist, and then 8651 Wait For It, who were the winning alliance captain. And uh, Wait For It is a well-known team. I believe they won uh, the Houston Inspire Award a couple years back, right? They got South Super's Inspire Award. And they Velocity they Vortex. won Houston they won Houston champs in Velocity Vortex. Yeah, they right, won right. Houston champs and they won South mm-hmm. Super Inspire Award last year. Mm-hmm. That's it. Right, and so now up uh, for a well-known video, uh, the first 500 plus match, <laughs> and this was in North Carolina by uh, 5064 Aperture Science and their partner Swift 7105, who was the finalist lines captain at Houston last year. So uh, this was actually not during the state championship, but it was in February, so I thought it'd be good to include this uh, in the show tonight. And this was at one of the qualifiers in the uh, Georgia State or North Carolina State Championship. Sorry, there were four advancement slots, and so seventy-three or seven thirty-one and fifty-sixty-four Aperture Science were the Inspire winner and finalist, and then the winning alliance captain Robo Knights and their first pick Swift were also advanced. And so uh, at the state championship, the highest score was four twenty-one, which is still respectable. Uh, but I'm I'm sure like all these strong teams will have improvements and have some really high scores at Houston. That's yeah, I know horrible. Swift. They've always put out such a good robot, and I think this year they really showed how a rotating arm can be right. one of the most effective uh, mm-hmm. crater side. A lot of people, after Gluten Free and Crack and Pinion released their diagonal slides, they thought that mm-hmm. no way that a rotating arm could work. But I think this is good proof that there's no real one meta this year. There's yeah. a bunch of designs that all require tuning mm-hmm. to get them to work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I was actually watching Swift's, uh, like, the, the most recent, and I think, I might be wrong, but it actually looked like they speeded up their arm a little bit, which, that baffles me as to how fast <laughs> it can go now. So, yeah. I mean, Aperture Science looking, uh, they, they have, like, sort of, they have a rotate. well, they have a diagonal arm as well as, I mean, they're sort of, like, gluten-free and crack and pinion. And mm-hmm. uh, I think as you were talking about earlier, Shashir, with like the uh, compatibility between the two bots, and I think that really, really shows in this match, and I think that's crucial in order to get those really high scores. I like Absolutely. seeing 50, uh, 5064 play. Um, so they rebuilt after this qualifier to a diagonal deposit lift as just a standard double lift, and their Lions captain played them on depot side at right. state championships. And that was really interesting to see um, a diagonal slide playing depot Worked mm-hmm. about as well as we all thought it would, I think. <laughs> so not very well. Can we, can we, by the way, yep. just point out two things that are very special in this match? One, of course, is Dancing Kitty to saw. Hey, watch this referee, man. This referee just goes and just right down belly check. Like, right as the time is about to run out. Hold on. Right. He has some real yeah, It's a very mobile ref. Yeah. Uh, you can see it. You can see it. 
But of course, as 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 we uh, did extensive an analysis of this on fun analysis, like uh, FTC, like a week ago or so, um, the dancing kid was the key to winning to the um, world record of this match. Um, oh, of course, if of if the course. kid wasn't there, they just wouldn't have gotten that. So no, yeah, uh, definitely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look at that rat. Just, <laughs> that rat is, that's, man, that was it. He's probably got a piece of paper handy too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> got to paper test it right as that yeah. might There you go. He he knows. All right. And uh, there's one of those. Last second hangs as well. That's true. That is true. Um, they they did. They were very close to the end of the match when they got those hangs. So it, it allowed them to. Uh, I think. Yeah, it does allow that maximized point output. That's just how that how that's right. going to work out. Right. Right. And uh, onto Oklahoma. One of the robots I'm really excited to talk about and discuss is uh, Atomic Gears. I mean, I don't know how many people have seen this, but their robot is just amazing to look at and watch. Just all carbon fiber. I mean, can't get much better than that. It's so fast. I know, I know. And no, one thing I actually noticed in the teleop period is it must be really back heavy, uh, as they were like they were having a lot of trouble, like or the, they were like jumping a lot in their matches, and they actually flipped over in one of the matches I saw. But they got up really quickly, and I was like, wow, that's awesome. Power to you, honestly, if they can do yeah. that. Um, I think, right. But yeah, carbon fiber is ending up becoming the next material of choice for FTC. Like right now we're like shifting from aluminum right now going towards carbon fiber. A lot more teams are using it this year than I've ever seen before. And I think that a lot of it's to do with people using more manufacturing techniques that are using like FRC or something like that. Right. Absolutely. Right. And uh, I actually, I actually talked to one of the members on their team and I was reading some, some of the stuff he said. And so they, they had to first like obviously design it all, but they have a water jet available to them. And I thought that was like really cool. And uh, I mean, I wish I had tools like that. <laughs> there you go. And yeah, so is... here we can actually see some of that jumping I was talking about mm -hmm. earlier. Absolutely. Right. Well, one thing that I am noticing with them is that their drivetrain is super fast, but their lift and dump is uh, unfortunately seems to be their um, sort right. of the the the, the choke right. point. Um, but of course, that can that's really easy to fix or, or right. improve, right? So seeing right. them at Houston, that's going to be insane. Just um, mm -hmm. with with that kind of with that ability to be everywhere on the field in the in the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, uh, ten. 10461 Atomic Gears, they were definitely they were clearly uh, the winning alliance. And they were actually also first inspired. So this is one of those other this is another one of those first and second advancement spot teams. And so the second advancing team was 8866 Cybernetics, and they were the Inspire finalist. And then their partner in this video, uh, the green robot on the left screen playing Red Depot, is a uh, mouse spit, and they were their first pick. So they also advanced. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say for Oklahoma. Does anyone in the chat have to add anything, or any of you guys? No, I think uh, I think we covered it. Uh, very very good robots coming out of there. Again, it's we're we're really gonna see. Um, I think we're seeing the future of where FTC is going with Team One Zero with uh -huh. uh, t uh, with Atomic. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, onto South Carolina, they were another one of those states that had only two advancement slots, and these were taken by the Inspire winner, Roaming Robotics, and Penguin Years as the winning Alliance captain. The highest score of this championship was 319, so it was also state record. So maybe we'll see some improvement in scores, but, I mean, you know, things can always happen. It's still a pretty good score in the end. For sure. Yeah. And uh, the last state I'm going to be discussing today is Tennessee. And so they... They had to advance in spots like South Carolina, and I actually had a video, but uh, I guess we don't have permission for like we don't have like Google Docs permission, so that's I'm sorry about that. All right, and so Tech Hogs was the winning alliance first pick, and then 13808 the time travelers uh, were or Tech Hogs was the winning alliance captain, and 13808 was the uh, sorry 13808 was the third place inspired. And Tech Hogs was the winning alliance first pick. And this was due to all of the teams that had already advanced from there. And I thought that was just insane. Like winning alliance first pick is your fourth advancement slot, I believe. And then your third place inspires your fifth advancement slot. And that's, I mean, in a two state, in a two advancement slot state, that's crazy. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. Very cool. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. that, that's very, that's very impressive how deep that field is. Mm -hmm. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.